What's going on, everybody? Excitement, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm with my boy Jay, hey. Jason, Off Grid Solutions PDX. We are in PDX right now. That's Portland. The big bridge behind us. Famous St. John's Bridge, right? Famous St. John's Seems Bridge. Yeah, staple for some of the, the van community doings lately. True story. This is a very anticipated build because how long have you had this thing, Jay? Had it for about a year, almost exactly a year. About a year now. Yeah. We're gonna get into all this right now, but really the client started with like doing one thing, two thing, three thing, and then all of a sudden went to a hundred things. And now we have this, which and is it's it's awesome. crazy. But uh, unlike a van, the ambulances are very well built, and the other thing that we didn't really take into consideration was how much deconstruction we're gonna have to do before we can start building the thing. So everything. You're getting in too much of the video right now. This is my intro. I'm new at this. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, we're, Jason's gonna explain all of that right now. So let's get him on and let's get him talking about what it's like converting an ambulance, ripping it down, all the way building it back up. Is it worth it? Would you do it again? You know what it takes insulation, wiring, wiring, wiring. Lots of wiring in this one, lots of wiring. I love it, I love it. Let's get, let's check this thing out right now. I'm super excited. Hey, we're on the outside of the van, but we're gonna walk in and we're gonna come back outside. Yeah, That's let's go inside. Minutes. So one of those things, out of sight, out of mind, you just mentioned how warm it is in here. According to that, it's 70 degrees. And I turned it down because it was getting a little too warm in here, so it's off right Thanks now. for shutting the door for me. All right, why is it warm in here? What do you got going on for heating? Van Life Tech System. Not the heated floors. This Not is... the heated floor. Uh, we are dealing with the height. He's, he's already right up against it with this thing, so we couldn't really uh, take away too much floor space for him. But uh, that right there seems to be doing a pretty darn good job in here as well as we have it insulated, so. So this is, uh, the Van Life Tech heat is the, uh, is the Siesta system. Siesta system, so we have a recirculating hot water with a four gallon tank that's actually kind of hidden underneath. You see from the outside. And then we have a 40 gallon stainless steel freshwater tank feeding it. So he's got- You have a stainless a, steel freshwater tank? A custom stainless steel freshwater tank, yeah. How many gallons? 40, plus the <laughs> yeah. four. So he's got 44 on board, he's ready to go. Yeah, for a while. For a while, yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the client the client himself. Uh, great guy, from what I understand. Yeah, it's pretty an awesome story, actually. So he's a doctor now, but he started in his career kind of in the back of one of these ambulances. So been kind of one of his, his dreams to get, get one and convert it into his own thing. So he spent a lot of time back here doing different things in a different ambulance, but... Uh, Do you know the dimensions of what we're standing around? I, I love these, they're so I don't roaming. know the dimensions actually of this thing, but I think it's about as wide as road legal would, would allow. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's pretty wide, you feel it when you're driving it for sure. I think it's like eight feet across, I think it's and eight feet. you and I are both short and we're standing very comfortably in here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm five eight-ish, maybe five eight and a half. What, you're a little five, bit shorter six, than me, six. yeah. Um, so I, I'll turn this around right now so you guys can see. I've got plenty of room, or plenty, but I've got enough where I'm standing okay. Again, I think this, even this right here, you, you notice that it gets pretty darn close. Like, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm pretty much right there if I stood uh -huh. up straight, which I never do. I, I don't even know uh, where to start in this thing. There's so many crazy little things in this thing. It's like, <laughs> where do you start? I guess that's the thing, right? Um, I do want to point out uh, for everybody, we'll start over here, I guess. Uh, this is the finished look that the client wanted. So it may look unfinished, but it's, it's very finished. It's actually clear coated, so it won't rust any more than that. So that was intentional. Like, yep, it's a forced rust, like a forced patina. So there's white paint, and then it's ground down a little bit, and then it's rusted, and then it's clear coated. So when you go like that, your hand's not gonna go. No, it's actually nice and smooth. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's very a, nice. We clear coated it with like a matte clear, so yeah. it's not super shiny. And that is just a bunch of storage or wardrobe, or yeah, it's storage from the interior and exterior actually. So that'll be like his cooking equipment and dirty stuff like that will kind of live in that cabinet things that need to be accessed from the outside, maybe like a tow rope or things like that, and especially kitchen stuff. So that way when he's cooking, he can like access all the cooking stuff from the outside, also access it from the inside. Cool. If it was raining out, so. He's got a plan, I know he wants to get out in it and go a ways out, because this is getting converted to four wheel drive, so. So this isn't th this isn't done yet? They're no, uh, it's actually getting picked up by another shop, the shop that dropped it off for me, I believe it's the shop OC from Orange County, California. They're gonna okay. pick it up. It's gonna get a U-joint off-road, six inch lift, and I believe it'll sit on 33s when it's done. What? So it's going up a long ways from where it is now. So you just did the interior Pretty and much. you did a lot of the lighting exterior? Yeah, did all the exterior lighting. Um, they're gonna handle the front bumper. They're building a special front bumper or they bought a, a luminous front bumper I think they're putting on it. We did the rear uh, tire swing out. 
but everything else we did was they're taking care of the rest of the rhino lining and stuff like that so it's not quite done the painting and whatnot we wanted to get it all sealed up get all the uh, diamond plating aluminum that you see out there we had to have all that laser cut and made made to the dimensions that we have and now they'll go over it so it'll all look like it's supposed to be there now cool uh before we go into the the cool front of the van right here uh what ac did you end up putting in for the client ah uh, so he ordered that but I mean, it's the dometic penguin the dometic penguin isn't a 12 volt it's 120 volts so does he have to be plugged in or does he have to have a charge well, he's got a 3000 watt inverter so he, okay. can, he can run it for a while and he's got uh over 600 watts of solar up top so 600 watts of solar really on the roof watts of solar on the holy roof. crap um and what's the battery bank uh, 300 amp hours, so he's got three Reliant. Very nice, and, and that is actually in its own compartment, I believe. Yeah. We will check that out when we go outside. Out outside. It's a little compartment in it. That's what makes this thing pretty rad. You're always just like, whoa, oh, there's, oh, there's more storage. Even this one here is kind of interesting because there's storage from the inside, but when you go outside, you'll see this is all big, tall storage from the outside. Right. So they, they double it up, but these turn out to be cool little, little cubbies in one. I like the red, whoever chose the red. He chose a lot of the red. He he wanted to stick with, you know, obviously it wasn't ambulance, so one of the things was making... This is your fan right here, and just so everybody knows, you put an AC, a fan, and 600 watts on the roof? Two fans. What? Oh my god, he has another fan up here, guys. <laughs> um, yes, we did. Holy... Very, very, very carefully. And a satellite. Some, and a satellite, yeah. yeah. It, we'll see if we can find some pictures of it, but we actually had to build custom bracing and stuff to work around the infrastructure of an ambulance. One of the reasons he did choose an ambulance was because of how well these things are built. I didn't know that going into it, but, <laughs> but you can roll these things over and these won't open up. Really? In an ambulance and stuff, they have to meet like really, really, really high standards before they'll send people and patients off and up so they're very safe they last forever the whole thing all of this box back is aluminum everything's aluminum and you ripped it down to the to the studs yeah now i've heard from you mostly but from others that ripping down into studs in an ambulance can be a problem because of wiring so the wiring was a whole nother battle i think i pulled out over 200 pounds of wire out of this thing we yarded out every single wire and started over so the whole cabinet uh that the power system's in used to be the power system from the original ambulance actually. And it was it was a nightmare. There was just so many things going on in there. Every light wire was cut on it. We had to put it back to where it was. And, and that's why we chose to go with the S-Pod to kind of run everything. Cause that's the unit that made all the lights flash. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to keep that cause it's an ambulance. So yeah. all of the exterior lights flash and strobe if you want them to, which is pretty cool. That is pretty rad actually. Like an ambulance, you know, obviously you're not gonna be able to use them very often but if you want to it's kind of a cool thing i think he's going to take it to some shows and things like that yeah so in situations like that i think that would be pretty fun for him i love the ceiling what did you do what is that this is pika pika the same thing i have in my van um it's it's pretty cool they ship it over from japan they char it and they ship it over from japan and then over here they wire wheel it down and they stain it a bunch of different colors mm -hmm. or like this just to clear yeah so there's a you have a guy that you go through i think yeah, right yeah, that's uh, here he in does. portland actually yeah. it turns out i'm renting the shop that he moved out of so if you look in my oh, really? shop, all the black marks across the ceiling is the black marks from the end of these boards. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, it was kind of a small world when I went all the way to Southeast Portland and bought my stuff. And Can you show me the front of this van, man? Because, like, I, I'm so just infatuated with it. Start with the cab and then come back into, like, what, what that TV is up there. From what we did in the cab forward, we, we pretty much took everything down. We refoamed the seats, got custom seats in the front, heated seats. Heated. Heated. Yeah, we've added heated seats to it. So it's cloth heated seats, which actually are really nice because it goes right through. Yeah. It doesn't take a while to warm up like leather. Backup camera's kind of trick. We tied the backup camera to a switch into the rear light bar. So as soon as you flip that, it comes on, gives you massive light back here. Controls or all of his controls are right here? Right. So, and again, we chose to run the S-Pod. So S-Pod. Can you, uh, there, you were in a video with me uh, a while back about another van that you did. You had uh, the S-Pod in that. And I got so many questions about the S-Pod. Right, it's a pretty cool unit. Can you sure. can you maybe nah, just break it down a little bit more about the S-Pod? Yeah. So, you actually have two of those screens in here. By yeah, way. <laughs> well, there's two screens. There's one up front so you can operate everything while you're driving. And then there's this one back here. And also he'll be able to monitor and do everything from his phone because it's Bluetooth. So you've got three screens essentially. What it is is there there's like solid state relays in a in a brain pretty much. And this thing runs them and you can add up to four brains. So I can run 32 circuits off this one screen. So you can see like we're on screen two and swipe over to screen one. So hit brake lights, brake lights are on out back. You put the brake lights? Well, because everything's run through the S pod. So like I said before, watch that red light up there. If I go and I hit the brakes, 
Oh, it just turned on. Correct, because the S-Pod is getting triggered by the signal and then working all the lights, so that way I can flash the brake lights when I want to. What else is on that? Everything. So. <laughs> Are your blinkers on there? Yeah, brake lights, right turn, left turn, rear running lights, reverse lights, uh, the white scene lights, the amber scene lights, and the rock lights. And now this then, is what you, before you got into converting vans, this is actually what you did. You wired up. I wired up. I was a car stereo guy, and, yeah. then, and then I worked for another van converter, and then I did my own thing. But right. playing with this type of stuff is what I did for... E on like a long time. A yeah. yeah, I definitely played around a bit. And then on page two, page two is a whole nother S pod, pretty much. And I'll okay. show you when we go in there. But this one's got my overhead lights, the Van Life Tech, a water pump, front, the 50. Well, I've got 60 inches of LED on the front, and then another 30 of amber LED on the front. So that took away pretty much all the switches. You have no, you have no uh, switches for lights. One, just the reverse one that triggers the backup camera. The reverse. Light. Well, I remember coming in here. There's no guys. There's no switches for anything. I don't see any water pump switches. I don't see any um, other like just random switches that you would have. Like you would see everybody else has the toggle, the toggle switches. switches. Yeah, we we kind of stayed away from that. We went. Uh... Do you have yeah, the absolutely. heater and the hot water on there? Correct. Yeah, Van Life Tech is that button right there. If I is it really? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that way, if you were not going to use it, you could turn that off. But most of the time, you turn that on, you leave you know, the aquastat off, and leave the heat off, it's not going to turn. Can you do what you did for me off camera? Can you What's turn that? the water pump switch on? Yeah. And then... So the water's off. He just turned the water... There it is. He... Oh my god. That's awesome. Yeah. The capability of that thing, like I said, it could run 32. So we maxed out the 16 pretty much on there. I think there's one or two unused. If you're doing a lot of wiring and you're going to wire up for the big lights, especially, and you're going to have to wire up relays, right? Four or five wires a piece on some of them, depending on what you're doing. That takes care of all of it and it makes it so much cleaner. Maybe people are going to be like, hey, I want my lights to dim though. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's the cool thing with the S Pod is all of the circuits are dimmable, all the circuits strobe. My camera's going flash. crazy. You better turn those lights back up. Oh. <laughs> Dude, that is so awesome. And again, like we were talking about, that is Bluetooth capability. So he'll be able to control that dimmable from in from bed. From the Murphy bed. From the Murphy bed. <laughs> that was a good segue right there. <laughs> uh, Jay, why don't you uh, show me that Murphy bed? Okay, one of the things was he wanted a Murphy bed, but we didn't want it to rattle because he's going to be off-roading this thing. So you are we, shaking that. You're not oh, acting right now. That. You're shaking it. We'll shake the whole ambulance with that thing. So the idea is... Again, guys, this is still unfinished. Um, it will be going to an upholstery shop. He's putting a 10-inch memory foam mattress on this thing. 10-inch memory foam mattress. And then this will be just a couch that lifts up. Uh, cushions, yeah. He hasn't done the cushions yet. That's pretty cool. Is this uh, powder-coated aluminum? It is, yeah. And then this thing is just what hooks it. Nifty. That that is a tight fit, but it works perfect. Yeah. So his he's gonna have another cushion there, or that's gonna be part of the bed, and the Murphy bed will come down. Yeah, it'll just be a cover, and I think this will be more storage and stuff. Maybe he can put his like hose and a few other things like that in there, and even probably have a little more storage on top of the water tank. That is so, so he, nice. So if you laid a you know piece in here. Yeah, I mean, you could have anything in there at that point. And like you said, especially if this was a cushion, cushion that was matching. Yeah. I mean, that would just be a massive bed. So. It'd be nice. Somebody actually recently commented about safes. Uh, he's got two bolted in safes, I believe, down there. Fingerprint scanner. And this one's actually kind of cool because it uses a, like a bracelet. So you walk up to it essentially with a bracelet and it'll open up. Like an RFID or whatever they're called. RFID yeah. RFID exactly. bracelet, yeah. yeah. Awesome way to have access out the back too. Really interesting flooring you went with, bud. Yeah, that's what he chose actually, so. I like it, it I mean. It's really cool, it's a, it's a definitely a different look. I like the, they're smaller tiles, you know, it doesn't look so much like uh, the normal kind of vinyl flooring because they're normally like six or eight inches and longer. Yep. So looks a little more like tile. And you're leaning up against the galley that you put together here. You have just a simple sink yeah. and a refrigerator. If you have a fridge that never shuts off, if you have power that always works, hot water, and a decent fridge, and I do like this fridge too. It's a really good size. It's, it's got a little freezer and stuff in it. So this little trucker fridge works out really good. It's a Dometic, but... You told me you're putting something up here, or there. Yeah, so something. this one will be a microwave. It's a 700-watt microwave. This is a coffee maker. And this will probably have like a little lip around the outside just to put stuff in and be separated here. Um, what is the benefit of having uh, the tubed aluminum here and you, and you know, you're going to talk about it. I know you are, but you bolted it to the, to the, uh, to the 
It's bolted to the infrastructure, so all of this is designed right down the tubes of the actual infrastructure where we land those. And, well, I, I like to call it the rolling earthquake of the road. Like, this, this cabinet will experience more jolting mm -hmm. driving from the parking lot to my shop than most of the cabinets on the planet will ever experience unless they're in an earthquake. Being light is also key. Fuel mileage for tire wear, brake wear. We're going to put a lot of miles on these things, right? Also, I hate rattles. <laughs> that and, well, the client so, definitely plans to take this off-road. Yeah, He's not. so again, having something that's not going anywhere is key. Stuff in it, I mean a microwave is not light in itself, right? right. So the microwave, coffee maker, and stuff, I don't want it falling off the ceiling. What's up with the walls? Like I know uh, these are, uh, you know, we see them on other, other companies make them as kits. Did you order it or did you make them yourself? Uh, we made all of these. There's, there's nothing that you can order for this ambulance. And Literally every single piece of this ambulance was handmade. Everything was hand done every by? Every single little, Every piece. There's literally nothing that you could buy that you can bolt in this thing. So, <laughs> I mean, I know you love your client and all, but I'm. Pr I think you're pretty excited to finally get this out of the shop. Yeah, it's been it's been quite a project, and it's just been uh, something that's been tough is just trying to learn like a new way to do things, and then really not be able to use it again. And along the way, to try to be fair with how you're billing it to someone. You know, this is a completely custom deal. So you say you might be able to get it done in a few hours when it could take you four hours to get a bolt out of the ground in this thing because of all the saline that had been drained down into the bolt. It was, they're completely rusted. Everything in this thing was a nightmare to get off. It's from Minnesota, so everything underneath was, was tough to deal with too. All things I didn't anticipate because I'm used to working on newer vans. Yeah. So every step of the way, it was definitely a learning process for me. Will you do another ambulance? No. <laughs> How about for yourself? Would you, do, would you do it for yourself even? No, I'm kind of a van guy. I'm, I'm really a sprinter guy. Yeah. I, I want to do a new Sprinter, eventually, As like a 170. And BA as around. these things are. I mean, these things are pretty damn cool. It's solid, and it's a, it, I mean, this thing's going to last forever. It's aluminum. The whole box is aluminum. Nothing, nothing will rust. Nothing will fall apart. Doors, everything. Everything's aluminum. What it's year aluminum. is it? This is a 2003, and it's got a 7.3 power stroke in it. So, it's got a very healthy motor. This is a really big good. motor. Yeah, it runs really good. So <laughs> This thing, this is the, I think uh, your, your colleague, your employee, John was saying this is probably one of the best engines ever made by Seven Ford. 7.3 is very sought after, yeah, as far as power strokes. The newer ones, uh, the 6 liter is what they came out with, and they had a lot of uh, head gasket problems and stuff. So this one proved to be very bulletproof. Anything else you want to show me inside before we go to the outside? I don't think so. I mean, that pretty much covers the inside. TV is 12 volt, correct? TV is 12 volt. Yeah, actually, I guess I, there is one more thing. But this thing's kind of cool just in the way that it's literally 12 volt. It's... So when we order stuff off of like uh, for semi trucks and whatnot, you can see it's literally got just a 12 volt plug. It's oh, yeah. wired right to the fuse block. You ain't messing around in this thing, Jack. Reinforced everything behind that so that's not falling off the wall. The reason why everything ended up even so tight up here is just flat due to where the infrastructure was where we were able to fit this van. This thing's just built so much different than a, than a van, a normal van. It's like, oh yeah, it shouldn't be bad. It's square, I tell myself as we start it. Yeah. Everything's square. I'll be able to actually use a table saw. This will be fun. Yep, no. No, not nope. at all. Nope. <laughs> not at all. No. Nope. Obviously, the thing's been fun. I'm stoked with how it looks right now. Learned a ton, but it definitely was one of the tougher projects that I've taken on. Where a van comes in, like I said, they're empty. Literally from here back, it's empty. It's a tin can. Yeah. This thing was the complete opposite. Literally just start peeling peeling stuff apart and we, we deconstructed the whole thing. So I have a lot of and photos. The, and the cab too. Everything. The whole interior is all heather gray. Two different kinds of marathon interweave, but we made them look the same. So it looks pretty Sano up front too. Well, let's go outside and show me the outside, would you? Let's go check it out. That's what a truck is supposed to sound like. <laughs> Even along the way, we replace all those batteries and everything. This is the seriousness. What? This is the seriousness of an ambulance, okay? So, what are those batteries running now? That's just the starter batteries. That's a starter battery. That's a starter battery bank. It's a 7.3 diesel, right? So two, two minimum, but three is what they had set this tray up for. Those are, yeah, those are starter batteries. Lots of storage in here. And again, what is that? That's an ARB compressor, and we've got a little uh, five-gallon tank underneath. We've got, you can see there's a little itty-bitty spigot right at the back. Oh, right over here, yeah. Yep, so we've got a quick connect out the back and a quick connect out of the front, and we just put the switch right on board. So, why would some? I mean, I know this, but why, why would somebody want an air compressor on board? Well, I mean, if he's going as far off-road as we hope he actually goes with this thing, then he'll be airing those tires down, and he'll be able to blow them back up to get out of there. 
you can air them down you can blow them back up you can handle sand or yeah, lard really like helps the, yeah widen that footprint letting the air out of the tires like the, the tires on my van uh, i can let them down to around i think eight to ten psi do you have a air, onboard air compressor not yet no not yet. <laughs> not yet the painter's house is never painted awning you got a pretty big old awning man this is a big awning and then we found this little baby awning too which is really rad because it, it doesn't require any legs it's freestanding, and I think that's just really cool. I actually kind of want one for the Jeep, Isn't which is over there. Yeah. All right, what's going on here? Because I know uh, your fabricator, um, also named Jay, spent many hours on this thing. Yeah, we did a lot of stuff. So this was backed into and all bent. All of this metal was all really banged up. So all all of this is custom that we made. Redecked it. Pretty much redid everything. We even put new grading and had it all powder coatings, and we reinforced everything because it was rusted and falling apart. This whole thing was really, really bad rusted. And then we even built like all of these mounts and everything to accommodate the spare tire carrier. Built this little guy because it is a dually, it kind of sits kind of far back. So we built this arm to adapt to this swinger. So we grabbed a couple parts and then made some parts, pretty solid unit, so. And the reason why the tire isn't on there guys is because obviously the new tires are not on the vehicle. So he hasn't put one on. This is so nice, man. Yeah, those are Waylands. Those are super bright. This, this is like what you're going to see on all the brand new ambulances. So we took all the old stuff out and upgraded everything everything to LED. And they are bright. And as well, so we got this one back here. And then also, the top light bar is really tricked. I can show you. Don't look directly at it. But the brakes, the turn signals, and the reverse lights are all tied into that light bar. That's pretty cool. It does all storage. Well, a lot of it's taken up on this side. So this is the monster 40 gallon water tank. Oh my goodness. So it takes up that whole cubby. But it's worth it. 40 gallons yeah, will last you a while. I mean, you don't even notice it's in here no. with the suspension that's underneath this thing. You can put all the weight in this thing and it's not going to notice. If you look at the leaf springs and stuff, it's super burly. Water, so, uh, baby. Our, our shower compartment. Actually, we got hot water on right now. It feels like everything's warm, ready to go. So that's the four gallon recirculating tank. And you can see this is the fridge actually. So all the water and everything is just directly underneath it. That's crazy that that like when you ripped it all out of there, that actually gave you access to the inside. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Well, we cut, we cut that down a lot. So that's his shower. He can set up anything he really wants out here in regards to an outdoor shower. Beautifully, this, you have hot water. This thing's magnetic too. So if he gets crafty, he can put a little magnet up here and it'll just stick this to it. And he's Whoa, good to go. That, if it gets crafty, that's what you're saying. Well, uh, I don't know where he'd want it. Right, right, right. What is uh, the last but not so, least? I'm really proud of this one. This Look at how clean whole, that is. Our whole power system. You got the rely on batteries. You got your Kotex 3000 watt inverter. You got a Sterling DC to DC charger. You got your breakers. You got Now, what's funny, Jay, is you actually build kits like this. Mm -hmm. However, you build them to go over wheel wells, you go over things like that. Yeah. You actually have to custom put everything in yeah, there. Yeah, we had to figure out where we we're putting everything. And like I said before, all the stuff, the all this was the electrical panel before. So it made sense to kind of stick with that theme as well yep. and, and keep everything going to that place. Even the shore power plug was already, the hole was here, it was bigger. So we put this diamond plate and we, we made our own shore plug to go in the spot that the ambulance's shore plug was. Okay. So we tried to keep it as much like an ambulance as it, as it could be as well. That's you pretty know? cool, man. Like this is where it'd be plugged in if it's parked in the fire station. Good thinking. So, so check this out. Now you're gonna see the power of the S-Pods, okay? So these are the S-Pods. Look how many wires I'm running off of these two S-Pods. That is a lot, dude. And this is only two of them. We can run four S-Pods, right? It's really impressive when you start to see how many relays and stuff I'd, I'd need to run all of this. Wow. It saves so much time in a big install and, and the cleanliness. I, I can diagnose this. I don't have to go looking through relays with, a, with my test light. Somebody that works on electrical would understand everything you just said, but it just makes your life a lot easier. Even though the cost of the unit might seem a bit more, when you add up the labor, it's not. S-Pods were originally uh, built for like Jeeps, really, for like Jeep light bars and Jeeps, yeah, off-road, yeah. that's the other reason why we like to use them, because they are burly, and they're yeah. meant to go bouncing down the road, because this thing will go bouncing down the road. I do want to just look at the front real quick. You put light bars up here. You got a uh, WeBoost antenna. So we got 60 inches of white and another 20 inches of amber, and then he's going to have two big round KCs on the front as well. Man, this thing is a beast. And so the other thing you can see... We custom made these steps. We have them off right now because if they came out, they'd blast into the ground because this is not where this is going to be sitting. So actually, we're going to pull them off when it travels to California just so they're not bashing on anything. But Good they, call. Come, they come down almost a whole foot. Yeah, you right said now. he's lifting at how many inches? Six inches of lift on 33-inch tires. So it should go up about nine inches, ten inches. From where it is right now. This first step is going to be up in here. 
So that will Jeez. make a lot of sense when it's sitting where it's sitting. Yeah. Well, Jay, this thing is remarkable. Probably my favorite ambulance or that I've it's toured. It's unique. I feel like I, I took some of like a lot of what my van feel is uh -huh. and like what I know from van building. And so Before we end the video, how can we find you and what do you do? So, um, because you're obviously not doing ambulance anymore. Yeah, so no what are you ambulances. doing? So right now we're specializing pretty much in power systems and helping people get up and going. Kits in, in by way of just parts and stuff like that comes in a kit with a schematic if you want to put it together yourself. Or they're pre-built. You literally flip, flip on the breakers, set it over the wheel well. You have to hook up the alternator. You have to hook up your solar panel. Uh, a chassis ground and shore power and you're up and rocking. Okay. Oh, the pre-built galleys and stuff. I'm not sure if we're gonna go that direction fully just because of what it takes to, to actually go through and build them. There's a lot. Um, with our metal stuff, I am working on a, a few metal things, but most of the metal stuff will be able to come from our partner. Mm -hmm. So it'll essentially come from a, the welding shop to be able to the powder coater. We're redoing our website right now, so there'll actually be like a, an inquiry sheet, kind of where you're located, what are you looking to have done, what's your time frame. That way we can start putting dots on the map and seeing if we can connect a route and make sense of it. So you're gonna be able to like do uh, uh, mobile installs? We're gonna do a couple mobile installs, yep. So we'll essentially uh, like either ship out a kit or bring it with us cool. and it'll show up and we can knock it out on the road or whatever. Pretty much we're gonna stick with electrical, so it'll probably be installing kits and like, um, the pre-wire and the consumption side of things like your 110s, your USBs, your 12 volts, all that stuff. We can wire up while we're there type deal too. Working with Van Life Tech, there might be an opportunity to do a couple of radiant heats on the road, Siesta systems, that's what There you go, doing. that's what I love to hear. Thanks you again, follow him, Off Grid Solutions PDX, all across the board, Instagram, uh, website. Appreciate you, buddy, as awesome. always. Thank you. See you soon.